This video was made to help people begin to understand the basic external anatomy of butterflies. It should be taken as a reference you can return to as you become more attuned to our lepidopteran friends. Keep in mind that specifics, such as wing venation, vary among species. Example butterflies have been selected because they allow you to see more clearly the structures or locations examined. Much of this information derives from Paul and Ann Ehrlich's How to Know the Butterflies, published in 1961. To start, butterflies as insects have three major body segments, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. Looking at the head first, we see the antennae extending into the environment, working as sensors for the insect. Each antenna is built of three parts, the scape attached to the head, a ring called the pedicel, and the flagellum, the segmented stalk that probes the environment. At the flagellum's end is the antenna club, the shape of which helps us distinguish species. The proboscis, a lengthy segmented tube, is extended to draw nectar from flowers and obtain other mineral-rich liquids and then rolled up again. To each side of the proboscis lie the labial pulps, notably extended in the American snout, but evident at close look in most butterflies. The largest features of the head are the compound eyes, each composed of thousands of omatidia. The thorax includes all six legs and four wings. In the prothoracic segment, the four legs attach. Notably in the brush foot butterflies, these appendages are greatly reduced. The middle leg and the forewing attach at the mesothoracic region, and the hindwing and hind legs attach in the metathoracic region. The abdomen is composed of seven pregenital segments and, in males, two genital segments, while females have three genital segments. Sex organs, including claspers in the male and the ovipositor in females, as well as the anus, are found in the abdomen. Butterflies have an exoskeleton made of hardened plates called sclerites, with flexible membranes between plates that allow motion. Muscles can attach to these plates almost anywhere. Spiracles, the small openings by which the insect exchanges gases, are dotted across the sclerites. We also need a tiny Latin lesson to understand directions of the butterfly body. Cephalic means toward the head end of the butterfly, while caudal means toward the tail. Ventral means relating to the belly and refers to the bottom side of an insect, while dorsal refers to the back side. We also use a distinction between basal and distal in pointing out features of the butterfly wing. Basal refers to the area where wings attach to the thorax, while distal refers to the part of the wing distant from that base. Lepidopterists have also built up an extensive vocabulary to refer to places on the butterfly wing. We'll examine a few of these terms. First, the wing's tip is called the apex, the farthest point from the body. The leading edge of the wing we call the coastal margin. The edge behind the apex is the outer margin, and the caudal edge is the inner margin. Terms we use for areas on the wing help us explain the positioning of patterns. The basal area is a region closest to the body, while the limbal region is along the outer margin. The apical area surrounds the apex, leaving the area in between these regions, the discal region. The angle on the caudal end of the outer margin is known as the tornus. We also denote a series of regions that describe distance from where the wings attach to the body. First, we have the basal, then the postbasal. The middle of the wing is divided into the submedian, the median, and the postmedian areas. Apical and subapical areas are at the wingtip, while the marginal and submarginal zones are along the outer margin. Here we see an American lady's wing from below. The veins, more evident from the underside, form the substructure of the wing, acting as struts. Cells are the wing areas separated by veins. 
Species differ in their venation patterns subtly, so understanding venation can help with identification. In the monarch, we can more easily see the arrangements of veins that are classified accordingly. Toward the head, the edge of both wings have a coastal vein. On the forewing, moving along the perimeter, we have the subcoastal vein, Five radial veins, numbered one through five, take us to the wing apex. Then there are three medial veins, followed by two cubital veins, and finally the vanal veins, not visible because they're behind the hind wing in this picture. Cells are areas between veins. The discal cell is found near where the wing attaches to the thorax. Most cells are named by the vein containing it on the costal side. In the hind wing, that small black stub is the humeral vein. Then the subcostal and radial veins are merged together. The radial sector is the next region extending to wing apex. Here is the wing's discal cell. Then we have medial veins followed by cubital veins and finally the vanal veins. The wing itself in all its colors is composed of thousands of scales, each containing a single pigment. As Marco Giraldo's scanning electron microscope image reveals, each scale has a complex structure of ridges and cross ribs that support two surfaces, laminae, held apart from one another. The scales scatter incoming light to help produce the amazing coloration of butterfly wings. Some male butterflies have a patch of specialized scales, the stigma, that produces scents used to attract females. This stigma on this dun skipper appears as a darker patch on the forewing. Stigmas aid in identifying and determining the sex of some butterfly species.